Paradise Killer. Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, last remnant of a lost future preserved forever in amber. And today it is time for episode 7... 8? 18? Episode 18 of my Let's Play of Paradise Killer, in which we are finally, after accidentally teasing it for about four episodes, gonna go talk to Crimson Acid. Finally, for reals, actually doing that. I hate Shinji. Maybe I should go and talk to Shinji instead. No, gotta stay on task. Gotta stay on target. I've got a plan, and I need to execute it. Oh, hey, there's a, totally a, just a way out at the back. Uh, I didn't even realise this was here previously. I saw the signs up on the walls, but... I should unlock this while I'm here. Fast travel unlocked. Starlight skins obtained. Incomprehensible starlight. The universe will kill you. If you ever learn the true nature of it, you will die. The enormity of the universe will crack your mind in two. So this is something interesting, again, because, um... The thing is, the word enormity doesn't mean big, it means monstrousness. It means awfulness. The enormity of a crime is not how big it is, it is how fucking awful and horrible it is to have happened. Um, so the enormity of the universe here either is a misused word by the writers, which is very common because most people misuse that word. I did, until fairly recently. Uh, so, or uh, the universe itself is some kind of a cosmic crime, which, given the nature of this setting, is entirely possible. Anyway, it is now time to actually have our conversation with Crimson Acid and desperately try to be avoid being distracted by, you know, um, any, any potential distractions with which we might be directly faced by this popular and highly blessed pop star. Crimson Acid. Syndicate idol and secret trader touched by a god. Good to see you again, lady. It's been too long. Born in the hospital of our martyred goat, England, in AD 1002 under the sign of the Endless Moon. As a teenager, Crimson left home to fight for Endless Moon in France. She excelled at guerrilla operations and became known as the glamour of the battlefield due to her stunning beauty and presence. When the Great Betrayal happened, she fled to join the Syndicate. Hello, Starlight. We're in a dark time. Someone has played a hell of a hand against the Syndicate. It's bad enough to bring the Exile back. Forgive me for being, being blunt, Crimson, but... The head? Things change. While you were gone, I got blessed by the gods. Uh, I mean, it does suit her. It's a good look, but... Um, I, think her, I think her making some kind of snarky comment about... Um, how these islands are so weird is something I'm really tired of, so I'm just gonna be nice. Plus, you know, we're drinking buddies, maybe I'll get more information if I'm nice. The new look suits you. It adds a certain je ne sais quoi to the ensemble. What's the A to B to C with the sewer pad? Quiet place to get away from everyone. After I became blessed, Monsterat convinced me to be the Syndicate's idol. Oh, okay, so you needed that position then. That's not... Hmm, that's interesting. I wonder what the implications for this culture are that, like... They've decided that they need a sort of a pop idol to, I guess, to hang the hopes of the masses on, let's say. Someone for the citizens to look up to. If you pray hard enough and serve the gods the best you can, yada yada. That kind of thing. It's good to have a place to hide away and run my sideline. Everyone needs their own space. How's the market in secrets? On an island full of snakes where everyone's got something to lose and something to gain? Business is booming. Look, before we get into the secrets I can sell you, we need to talk about your investigation. Judge brought you back from exile. You have their authority. You can find any truth. Lady, you're in some deep trouble. Not everyone wants you to punish the guilty. They're going to want you to remove certain players and redefine the shape of the Syndicate for their own ends. Well, yeah, and water is wet. Be careful with the power you've got, lady. So, you want to buy a secret? I mean, I do wish to buy a secret, but let's interrogate first. Do you think Henry did it? Do you? I'm asking you. I don't have enough details. How did he escape? How did he breach the seals? The answer to every question seems to be a hand wave and a he's possessed by a demon. Convenient answers are dangerous. What secrets do you have? Anyone got a motive for last night? Lady, I've got lots of secrets to sell. I can give you different people's motives, I just don't have an opinion about who did it. Well, who does have a motive, then? These all come at a price. I'm not handing out candy. Secrets take a lot of work to acquire. 
I've got something on the Grand Marshal, the Architect, the Doctor, the Happy Couple, and Witness. So everybody except Yuri then, I think? Take your pick, but come with your wallet. You're going to make a tidy profit. You got a point? Um... Fuck it, what is her motive? Any reason why you would kill the council? I'm going to be straight up with you, lady. This island is full of snakes, and I want you to hear this from me. I hate what the Syndicate have done to me. I'm an idol they trot out to rally the citizens. I gloss over the misery with a pretty smile. I haven't got anything against idols, but this isn't for me. Montserrat devolved into paranoia. Sorry to speak ill of the dead, but he was tightening his grip on us all. One of the first things to go on the next island is my little emporium. Dictators can't have someone else peddling secrets, can they? Is that enough to drive you to kill the whole council? No, I didn't do it, but someone did, and they're going to want to shift the blame. That's why I'm being straight with you. Well, that stands to reason. Also, I do really love the idea of literalising uh, the kind of celebrity culture as an opiate for the masses. This kind of idea that, like, in order to help keep all of the ordinary people happy, uh, or at least obedient, they need... They need they need celebrities to get invested on in in on their behalf, I guess, kind of like as a kind of an external thing to obsess over. But also, there's the aspirational idea. Secretly, everyone believes they could become famous, wealthy, skillful, powerful, or whatever, and everyone secretly wants to, but very few people do. And the lie that you know you could be the next rock star is one of the lies that our culture runs on. Um, as a, as a system. So the idea that someone would get fed up with being a, head, a figurehead in that context really is intriguing. Here he's got some things to say about you. Oh, I bet he does. He isn't my biggest fan. He says you want to be a soldier again. Says you want to be in the marshals. How did you two start talking about that? Asking around about motives. And he thinks that's enough to be my motive? That I kill the council just to get to try and be a marshal? Are you denying it? No, it's true. Lady, do you really think that's a motive for mass murder? Hmm. I mean, I think it is. I think it is tenuous, but... Well, I mean, I do think it's tenuous, but I'm always reluctant to let information flow the other way in these investigations, but the way it's written requires me to. By creating a state of terror, you can make a strong case for it. Lady, 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 you're letting the snakes get to you. That little plan you've cooked up is a hell of a stretch. There's no guarantee it would work. If I did do it, don't you think that the marshals would circle the wagons? If everyone's a suspect, you can't have a potential murderer joining the marshals. And what if you were working with Aikiko? Well, then why would she tell you? I'll let you off, since Exile has obviously dulled your reasoning. You come at me with garbage like this again, and our arrangement may come to an end. Hmm, interesting. What is her alibi, though? I assume her alibi is I was in the sewer. Where were you last night? I was here at my hideout, waiting for Lydia's pickup. I'm always one of the last to leave the islands. Yuri thinks he's being funny by making me wait. I left when Judge summoned everyone for the crisis meeting. So, yeah, so she doesn't have any corroboration of her alibi, then. Any evidence of that? None. That paints you in a bad light. I can only tell you the truth. If I knew a mass murder was going down, I'd have got a way to corroborate my alibi. There weren't any whispers of what was about to happen. Nothing. If Henry didn't do this, whoever did it managed to keep it extremely quiet. Am I taking your word on that? I'm running a business here. If I had something, I'd sell it to you. Yeah, but that's that, that logic doesn't hold. She wouldn't sell it to us if it's what uh, is her out for having a broken alibi. She she admits she doesn't have an alibi, but she says, you know, I wouldn't tell you that for free uh, if I had a vested interest in it. But she has a vested interest in it because she doesn't want to be the suspect for the crime. Um, also, I'm taking everything everyone says on faith. There's no way for me to like know for sure that the words that people tell me are true. Like, have I, hang on, have I missed something? I don't think at any point I've been told what that, like, I have some kind of cosmic truth arbitration. The information stored in 
Starlight is objective. That's what we're told at the start. The evidence that you pick up and that gets listed in, in there is objective. But that doesn't mean that the words people tell me are objective. That doesn't mean that the information I'm provided by people, they could be mistaken or intentionally lying or misled or misleading me. Hmm. I'm gonna, uh, I'll come back to K-Hacks because I don't want to cause problems. Why would Aikiko kill the council? Secrets aren't free. Uh, okay, okay, so that's, that's gonna cost me blood crystals. So in, before I ask about any of the information that I could get out of her, I'm going to buy my Starlight upgrades. Crimson, have you got any upgrades for Starlight? You've come to the right place. I guess you're breaking into those nightmare computers looking for evidence, right? I've got an upgrade which will give Starlight the ability to read more of the symbols. Get you into more systems and more evidence. I can do it for 10 blood crystals. Best offer. I'll take it. Nice doing business with you, lady. You'll need to install this manually. Take a look in your inventory. If you need more upgrades, you'll have to look elsewhere. That's the only one I have. You should try buying a drink if you haven't. Heat on the street is that dead nebula knows where one is. I'll keep that in mind. I also heard one of the power station employees found something they shouldn't have. Aha, okay. I'm on it. Okay, that's interesting. So I've already got I've already got the one from Dead Nebula. Uh, so I guess that means that um, the third upgrade would be over by the power the power factory. I think there was a ghost over there who asked me to retrieve something for him, but I don't think we've handed in whatever it was, or possibly not even found it yet. So uh, I guess I'll have to go try doing that next. Because it would make my life so much easier if I could just crack all these damn computers. Why would Aikiko kill the council? Secrets aren't free. Deal. Good crystals, minimal imperfections. Aikiko's a soldier through and through. She's also their leader. They're the only family she's ever wanted. The Marshals aren't syndicate though, they're citizens. A security measure by Montserrat. They don't have our immortality and they don't get moved between islands. That makes them expendable. Precisely. Aikiko has endured a millennia of sadness watching her troops die or get left behind. She wants them in the Syndicate, get them gene therapied up and create a battalion of immortal soldiers. End her heartache. She has motioned the Syndicate to try and get her marshals inducted, been refused every time. She's hurting and angry. What does she get from murdering the Council? She wouldn't be promoted to a position where she could change the rules and keep her marshals alive between islands. She'd use the murder to scare the new Council. The untouchables were touched by the hand of death. She can argue for increased militarization on the next island, scapegoat it on a citizen and panic the next council into creating martial law with troops inducted into the syndicate. Use loyal troops rather than expendable troops. Precisely, Montserrat was always scared of immortal soldiers having dangerous thoughts and leading a coup. If Aikiko did this, she proves that it should If Aikiko did this, she proves that the threat isn't from the marshals. Do you have any proof? I sure do. I pulled this from the Moon database. You never know when something like this will come in handy. Thanks. Lady, there's more. I haven't got proof, so I won't charge you for what I'm about to say. Aikiko falls in love with her troops. That's why she hurts so much. She's had a string of relationships throughout the islands. Is there someone special on this island? Captain Voth. He's the, hi He's the highest ranking marshal under Aikiko. The highest ranking marshals are chosen to guard the council during the birth of, an, of a new island. So he was murdered last night? It looks that way. So if her lovers are dying when the island ends, her motive is to kill the council, to push her agenda through, to get her marshals into the syndicate, and then make them immortal. That's a pretty big bet to make. I agree, something doesn't add up. I'm not convinced Voth died last night. Wh Why would you tell her that?! It didn't even give me the option of choosing whether to share that information. Information should only flow one way, and frankly, I should charge her- if I'm gonna tell her that, I should charge her for it. Don't tease, lady, that sounds like a secret. Don't secrets have costs? I'll refund you for our earlier transaction. <laughs> okay, I'm a fool. <laughs> I need to stop yelling at things before they play out. I'm not sure I should- tell her the information, but I don't want to risk her getting offended. 
It's a deal. I'm taking my first steps into the secret trading industry. Pleasure doing business. The dead marshals outside the council building aren't marshals. The blood doesn't match. So where are the real marshals? I'm working on that. If you want to enter the viper's nest, you could try the barracks. If I was a marshal looking to lay low, I'd be in there. They don't let anyone in. I'll see what I can find. Yeah, so I definitely still need to find a way into that fucking barracks. That's been a goal since literally episode one or two. <laughs> but, in addition, that really, really does point more towards Aikiko. Like, obviously, that's a fairly ridiculously convoluted plan for her to enact, but it fits the evidence a lot better than any other motive we've seen so far. The logic of, like... The, the fact that the martial guards aren't martial guards, the two who have been killed, if she falls in love with her own marshals, and she's sick of watching her men dive pointlessly, but she wouldn't sacrifice them as part of her plan. And she's the only person in a position to fake a uh, a dead count a dead citizen as ha as if they were a a marshal so it sounds to me like it's definitely pointing towards Aikiko again but um, we'll need to hear her testimony herself I think before we decide anything <laughs> I'm always I'm always super duper double paranoid I'm I'm convinced that whatever I think is the most likely thing is going to turn out to not be the case We'll review this evidence a bit later. Why would Carmelina want to kill the council? You know this costs, right? Pleasure doing business. Carmelina's not allowed on the council. The Silence family were banned for ever being on the council. You remember her father's crime, right? Romeo's fall from grace? He was deceived by cosmic deceit. Bingo. Cosmic Deceit deceived him with promises of power, standard stuff. Cosmic Deceit wanted Romeo to sacrifice crying grudge in a ritual. That would give Cosmic Deceit enough power to resurrect. Resurrecting the gods is our mission, but not at the expense of deceptions and sacrificing other gods. Romeo was stopped before he could go through with it, and his punishment was execution and the rest of his family being barred from a council seat for eternity. Okay, but we knew that already. We, we literally already- she told us! Like, she mentioned to us that her, her family were banned. Uh, or rather, she confirmed that when we asked her about it, because that was just something that LLD already knew. The ruling still stands. Carmeline is on the throne right now. Judge thinks they made the right call. It's a temporary situation. She's the highest ranking outside of the council, and we're about to move to a new, perfect island that she designed. This transition to our eternal home needs to go right, and she's the best place to get us through it. Has Carmelina protested the ruling in the past? She's submitted motions to have the ruling overturned and get on the council. All have been denied, though. Can I see the motions? Of course, I pulled them from the moon database. That moon database is doing a hell of a lot of narrative heavy lifting. I'll give you a little extra for free. I don't know if this helps with anything, though. Hit me. About 25 years ago, Carmelina went into isolation for a year. No one saw her. Any idea why? She said it was for work, that she had a new project and didn't want to be disturbed. Nothing ever came of it, though. We were never shown the fruits of her labour. Why do you think this matters? You know when you get a bad feeling and it festers. Maybe I just needed to say it out loud, or maybe it means something. I'll see what I can find. Alright, well that would tally with Carmelina and Witness working in the secret lab, wouldn't it? So maybe she has a demon in her. Maybe they've all got fucking demons in them. There's evidence Yuri has a... There's evidence Yuri has been deceived. Maybe Carmelina is possessed. Hmm. Why would Doomjazz kill the council? Got the cash to pay for a secret? Because this is a big one. The Syndicate's origins aren't what they seem. He knows the original secret. Before the first island, during the Great Betrayal, Montserrat made a mistake that got Doomjazz's father killed. This was before you joined up with the Syndicate. He was our original military general, a legendary soldier. I'd always heard rumours about him before I joined the Syndicate. There weren't many humans the gods feared, but he was one of them. 
When the syndicate fled to the first island, Montserrat made a stupid call to investigate a tomb that was supposed to contain a heavenly weapon. He was wrong. There was nothing there. Doomjazz's father attempted to hold off the pursuing armies during Montserrat's folly. It was too much. Our pursuers broke through and killed half the syndicate before we got away. The incident was struck from history, but some of the existing council members know about it. Ice Kiwami likes to talk when he's had a drink, and Doomjazz was his closest friend. He let the secret slip. Curious. What do you mean, was? Ice Kiwami had some skeletons in his closet, and he got found out. The next island was going to be a bad time for him. He took his own life a few years ago. It's rare for Syndicate members to take their lives. Unheard of for Council members. A secret for another time. Hmm. Also, I didn't point this out, but she mentioned something about gene therapy. So it seems like the immortality of the Syndicate is not something endemic to the nature of this reality. Uh, it's just that any any citizen or any person, anyone, any individual human being can be modified uh, to be, you know, immortal and strong and young forever and whatever. It's just that they reserve that as a right for for members of the syndicate rather than, uh, you know, making it freely available to anyone. I'm gonna... No, fuck it. I'm gonna ask her about the photo. Why does Doomdrive have a photo of Aikiko? Got a pay up, lady? He was in a relationship and he still loves her. Oh, is that it? That was easy. I mean, that's obvious. It didn't work out. She can't relate to people who aren't soldiers and he can't keep his dick in his pants. Hmm. A strange choice for him. Aikiko's an amazing soldier. She's intoxicating to watch at work. Why does that give him a motive for the council murder? The original secret. Montserrat was planning on doing a similar operation that got Doom Doomjazz's father killed. A suicide mission for Aikiko, Doomjazz found out. So he killed the council to protect her. Wouldn't you kill a bureaucrat to save the person you love? Depends on, depends on the bureaucracy that the, of which they are a part. Does she know all this? She can just tell me everything that's going on behind the scenes. Is she supposed to be a hint mechanism and I'm supposed to find this stuff out otherwise? Oh, that's... Hmm, that hadn't occurred to me before. I, I thought she was a character like any other, but if she's supposed to be a hint mechanism that can provide you information for money that you can find out through other methods, then I probably shouldn't just buy all of these. But there's no indication that that is what she is. What do you know about Lydia and Sam? I know that it'll cost you. I know about their last job. What last job? Back in the day, Lydia told you that after she met Sam, they left the world of assassination for good, right? It isn't that easy. Once you're in that world, you are bound to it until you fulfill all of your duties. An assassin is the most effective tool in the world, and all tools have owners. In order to leave their old life behind, Lydia's former master had to do her one last job. She had to destabilize a government in Europe. Several dead officials allowed for a regime change. Why didn't she tell me this? We've been friends for millennia. She's ashamed. They vowed to end the killing. Sam helped her do the job and they were in it together. It's not as romantic as the story they told everyone, is it? Always be suspicious of romantic stories, lady. Life doesn't work like that. Is this what council murder is? A regime change? Who can say? Was it revenge? A crime of passion? Regime change? You've got some investigating to do. Well, that's not uh, astonishingly new. Uh, well, not astonishing information, but I think it's less of a... Like, that's not really a motive. I could come back and ask about the characters I haven't met yet, but, like, I'll forget. I, I don't think I'll remember. Do you know why a witness would want to kill the council? Let's see your crystal. I know witness was growing to despise Montserrat. Montserrat was tightening his grip on us all. He was giving in to paranoia, worried about his precious, perfect island. History was repeating. The island was shrouded in fear. We've all grown complacent and happy in our freedoms. Montserrat had always been building towards a perfect island and a perfect syndicate. As you know, the syndicate was formed with the goal of resurrecting our gods. 24 islands in and we aren't doing a good job. Almost all of the pyramids out in the ocean sit empty. Montserrat didn't care, though. He decided that was step two. 
Well then what's step one? Step one was the Syndicate. Our efforts have always been divided between resurrecting the gods and improving the islands. If Montserrat could take... If Montserrat could make the Syndicate perfect, then we could put our full attention on the gods. Why wouldn't Witness want to go along with that? You've been gone a while. Montserrat changed, and so did Witness. Witness didn't trust Montserrat at all. Has Witness been deceived by a god? Not that I'm aware of. I've never had that suspicion. I just think this is some self-radicalization. He slipped further and further into worship and fear of the Astral Masters. You don't need to be deceived into being a servant when you've already got a healthy dose of the end times fear in you. Why well, ain't that a mood? So Witness murders the Council to put the fear of gods into them and refocus the Syndicate on our holy mission. I'm not saying that's what happened, but if you want to pin a motive on Witness, that's what I'd go with. Okay, so that's kind of tenuous enough that we can disregard it for the time being. Witness believes we're heading for the end times. How can we have end times if our gods are dead or dormant? Only a handful of gods came to Earth, the rest of them are all still out there. The gods are self-serving morons, they've never looked out for their own kind. Take it up with witness, I have no time for religious debates. The line between god and demon is still pretty unclear, just like the line between blessing and deception. I suppose maybe a blessing is freely given or given in exchange for service with no further breakdown, but a... A deception eats you up inside over time, since that's what they were saying about Yuri, maybe. Or it's one way to take it. God, there's a lot of this. Um, I think I'm going to call it a day here, because I am running low on time. But we're not actually going to stop here. Next episode, we'll pick up and continue our interrogation of Crimson Acid and then go on and do something else somewhere else, including possibly talking to Aikiko. So, uh, bye for now. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you later if you want to see the next, uh, uh, the next bit of this bit of the story. I recommend that you give me a, uh, a subscribe and a notification thingamajig and all of those other things that YouTubers are supposed to ask people about to be doing, which I can't fucking stand, but apparently you got us, so... Uh, I'll probably edit that rant out. Anyway, that's all from me for today. Thank you so much for watching. Join me again for more talking to Crimson Acid. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe, and share. I also stream on Twitch, and I now have a Discord server for stream scheduling. You can contribute to my existence on Ko-fi or Patreon, and all of those links are in the video description. Thanks so much for watching.